This video is on my fourth periodic trend, the ionic radius. Ionic radius is abbreviated as IR, and this is the size of an ion, so the radius, the size of our ion. We can have two different types of ions. We can have cations and anions. A cation is a positive ion, and all metals form cations. This positive ion is formed when an atom loses an electron in order to be stable or to form an electron configuration of a noble gas. Remember that noble gases have all their electrons paired and all their shells filled so that way they're in their most stable form. Here, they lose the energy level that those electrons were in and therefore get smaller than the neutral atom. So for example, we have magnesium. This is a regular magnesium atom, the Bohr model of it. And it is in third energy level, because it's the third period down. Energy levels 1 and 2 are filled with 2 electrons and then 8. And then my third energy level has 2 electrons in it because it's the second uh, group over with its 2 outermost electrons. To become an ion, and specifically a cation because magnesium is a metal it's on the left hand side of our periodic table, it loses these 2 outermost electrons and with that also loses its outermost shell. As it does this and loses its outermost shell, it gets smaller because now I only have two rings around my nucleus with 10 total electrons. Anions are negative ions. All nonmetals form anions except our noble gases because they already have as many electrons as they want. They don't want to add any more or give any away. A negative ion is formed when an atom gains electrons in order to be stable and form an electron configuration of a noble gas. Since they have more negative charges than positive charges, the extra negative electrons are repelled away from each other. And therefore the ion is bigger than the neutral atom. So an example is sulfur versus sulfur minus 2. In my original sulfur atom, I have 6 protons, 6 electrons, and it is shown in its form model like this. As I add 2 electrons to fill these two empty spots here, which go in its outermost shell. I now have eight electrons in my outermost shell. I have six protons in the nucleus, 18 electrons total. Therefore, I have two extra electrons, which start to repel each other because they're no longer being pulled on by the nucleus. So therefore, my anion is bigger than my atom. My cation is smaller than my atom, so that makes cations smaller than atoms and anions bigger, so anions are going to be your biggest, cations the smallest. For the falling ions, we want to see which, uh, which atom will form from the falling ions. So we locate where they are on the periodic table. Calcium is in my second group, and calcium is going to want to remove two electrons, it's a metal, so it wants to remove electrons and remove enough to become its last noble gas. So it's going to remove its two electrons, so we're at calcium plus two. Nitrogen, we find that on the periodic table, we notice that it's three spaces away from its noble gas. Therefore, it's going to want to add three electrons to become, and have a stable electron configuration. Rubidium is in group one, he wants to lose one electron, make a positive charge then, because it's lost an electron. One less electron than protons, and it becomes Rb plus 1. Aluminum, again, is in its third group over. Here it wants to lose its three electrons, so that way it can become the noble gas configuration. Here we have As, arsenic. Arsenic wants to gain three electrons, to become a noble gas. By adding three more electrons, it becomes a stable electron configuration. Same with oxygen, it wants to gain two electrons to become a noble gas. Essentially, they want to figure out what's the easiest way for them to get to eight electrons in its outermost shell, in its outer higher, highest energy level. And we do that by looking at where it is on the periodic table. Remember that the group numbers correspond to the number of valence electrons in its highest energy level. Therefore, it will help us determine what kind of ion it's going to make. 
Remember that metals make positive cations and anions make negative uh, non-metals make negative anions, and therefore that will help guide you as to which way it's going to gain or lose electrons. Now here we want to determine what is the smallest in each group. Number one, we have carbon plus four, carbon, and carbon minus four. Remember from before that anions are going to be the biggest, cations are going to be the smallest, therefore this one Carbon minus 4 is going to be the largest. Carbon plus 4 is going to be the smallest. Here again, I have sodium and sodium plus 1. Sodium plus 1 will be the smallest. Number 3, we have nitrogen and nitrogen minus 3. Again, my anions are going to be the largest. Therefore, my nitrogen is smaller. And I have iron and iron plus 3. My cation is going to be smaller. So summarizing all of my different trends, which on the periodic table element has the lowest atomic radius, the highest ionization energy, and the highest electronegativity? Hopefully for each of these, you have selected fluorine, as that is in the upper most right hand portion of your periodic table. For your highest atomic radius, lowest ionization energy, lowest electronegativity, Someone with the most energy levels, lowest ionization energy, so one requiring the least amount of energy to remove that outermost electron, lowest electronegativity, the one that wants one more electron, the absolute least, you should have found francium.